One of the most common questions I get from new hockey fans is, what is icing? Well, today we're going to cover two concepts that go hand in hand, offside and icing. To understand both concepts, you first have to understand that hockey is a game of zones. My name is Matt, and this is Game of Zones, Offside and Icing Explained. Welcome to Benchworm. We make videos that help people understand sports because we believe enjoying sports brings communities together. Okay, let's explain. As we mentioned in our Hockey 101 video, in hockey the ice is comprised of three zones, the neutral zone in the middle, and the contextual offensive and defensive zones. Let's talk about what happens in each zone from the point of view of a team. Okay, in this scenario, you are Team Canada and you're playing against Team Sweden. Let's start with the neutral zone right in the middle. The neutral zone is where the battle is. If your team has possession of the puck in the neutral zone, your goal is to move the play forward. You want to enter the offensive zone by getting the puck across your opponent's blue line. This is called a zone entry. If your team doesn't have the puck, you want to do everything you can to keep the other team from entering your zone. Okay, now let's look at your defensive zone. When you're playing in your own defensive zone, all you want to do is get the puck out. This means getting the puck past the blue line. You want to get the puck into the neutral zone or even the offensive zone. And lastly, when you're in the offensive zone, you want to do two things. One, keep the puck in the offensive zone. And two is, of course, score. These are important concepts to know as they'll better help you understand offside and icing. Okay, so let's talk about being offside. So as mentioned, when you're in the neutral zone, your objective is to get into the offensive zone. Again, that means getting this puck across that blue line. Here's the catch. The puck has to fully cross the blue line before you or anyone else on your team can fully cross. Fully crossed means that you can see some white between the puck and the blue line. If you or anyone on your team crosses first, the play is considered offside. Now because hockey is so fast, it can be hard to tell if the play is offside or not. That's why there's a dedicated role for this. Enter the linesman. There's a linesman positioned at each blue line whose job is to judge if the play is offside or not. When the play is deemed offside, one of two things can happen. If your team has possession of the puck, the play is dead. The referee blows the whistle and a face-off takes place back in the neutral zone. If your team doesn't have possession of the puck, the play is still alive. Anyone on your team who is offside now has to tag up to get onside. This means exiting the offensive zone and coming back in. Going back to talking about zones, this is why when you're defending in your defensive zone, it's so important to get the puck out. Once you get that puck out of your defensive zone, everyone on the opposing team who is in your zone immediately becomes offside. They all have to exit your zone. Now with that fresh in mind, let's tackle icing. So say you're in the defensive zone and you really want to get the puck out. So you slap it all the way down to the other side of the ice, past the opposing team's goal line. Well, that's icing. Icing is whenever you send the puck to the other end of the ice when you're on your half of the ice, as in behind the red center ice line. When you ice the puck, play is stopped and the faceoff is sent back to your defensive zone. Not only that, if you ice the puck, you can't change your lines before the faceoff. Your team is out of energy and the opposing team has five fresh new players. Sometimes icing can get a little confusing. Here are some scenarios when it's not icing. If the puck hits an opposing player on the way back, even by accident, that's not icing. If your team is shorthanded, meaning you have less players on the ice than your opponent, you can dump the puck to the other side of the ice as much as you want. If the puck doesn't cross the opponent's goal line, it's not icing. It has to pass this line right here. If the referee thinks the opposing team could have reasonably gotten to the puck before it passed the goal line, that's also not icing. So one thing I haven't mentioned is that it's not icing if your player gets to it first. So in theory, you can dump the puck all the way from your side and have a fast skater on your team get to it first, while being on side of course, to negate icing to continue play. Traditionally, this created one-on-one -on -one races to the puck between players from opposing teams, and two players racing at top speeds towards the boards can be a recipe for disaster. To avoid this, the NHL introduced hybrid icing. In hybrid icing, races to the puck can still happen, but instead of having the players race all the way to the boards, the referee makes the call when they're by the hash marks. If the referee thinks that the offensive team will get to the puck first, play automatically goes on, it doesn't matter who touches the puck first. 
But if the referee thinks that the defensive team will get to the puck first, play is stopped and icing is called. Thank you for watching. We are Benchworm, teaching you sports from the bench. What do you want to learn about next time? Let us know in the comments. And if you like this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe here. For more Benchworm, check out this video.